it's going to be summertime and you probably will be visiting friends and family and having overnight guests and that's what I'm getting ready for. And recently we had a family of five visiting us in June, so I thought I would share my experiences with you on hosting an overnight guest and getting things like beds ready, linen, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's talk about getting ready for overnight guests. Hi, it's Kasha McDaniel, and I am a home stager decorator, and you're listening to the Creative Home Podcast, where I talk about staging and decorating and all things associated with your home. So take a listen. Hello, and welcome to another Creative Home Podcast. I am your host, Kasha McDaniel, and I want to talk about getting ready for overnight guests Um, with summer coming or here basically uh, a lot of your kids are out of school and you're probably gonna be traveling a lot so you may be visiting family and friends or they may be coming to you like in our case we actually have a couple of friends coming over to us we're going to other places so there's a couple of things that you really should look at other than like cleaning the house which is a a given for me but I don't know if that's for everybody else too but you want to you know meal plan and figure out are you eating in or are you eating out how big is the party is it another family you know so there's a lot of questions and things that need to go through your mind when you're getting ready for overnight guests now our guests um came over for a longer weekend so they're here for like three four nights um and it's a family of five so our family of five plus their family of five it's a full house, right? So you got to figure out what you're going to do for sleep locations. So that's kind of one of the first steps that I go through in my mind um, is where am I going to put them to sleep, right? Um, So we have a bonus room, the kids have their own bedrooms. So for us, it makes sense that their kids would sleep with my kids in their bedrooms, right? So one per um, bedroom basically and then the adults I have a big huge bonus room that we can put an air mattress in um, or an air bed some of you guys may have a sleeper sofa Um, if you have something like that you know you definitely have to think about where is the sleeping location gonna be okay so it's a spare bedroom if you have one of those because maybe like my kids my oldest one have moved out for college but she's back so her bedroom's not open anymore (laughs) otherwise we'd be putting people in there but nope she's back so we've got to figure out where else to put everybody so number one determine your sleep location Number two, find the beds, right? If you have a spare mattress, if you get, like I said, a sleeper sofa, um, we have blow up air mattresses. So what I did is um, the day before, not like two days before they showed up, I actually blew up the air mattresses just to make sure that they weren't leaking. <laughs> Cause I know one hates that more than kind of going, woo, and you wake up the next morning, you're like, oh, I'm halfway on the floor and this is kind of soft. Yeah, so we have a bunch that we've collected over the years. Um, So if you have an airbed, check for that. If it's, you know, a mattress or like a big couch, we also have a big, huge sofa um, sectional that we've had friends sleep on. They're like, oh, this is really comfy. This huge, big couch sofa sectional. It's in the L shape. And I just, you know, put sheets down and give them blankets and pillows. And, you know, they're perfectly content that way too. So definitely check to make sure that... There are no leaks if you are using airbeds, okay? Um, The next thing I had to do was find um, the bedding, basically. (laughs) That was the hardest part because, so for the kids, I have twin-size air mattresses, and for the adults, I have a queen-sized one. Um, And like I said, we've had these before because when we move um, and have moved overseas, we ended up getting, you know, the house was packed up, the beds were all packed up. We slept on air mattresses until we had to leave. Um, And then on the way back, we got those same air mattresses. We actually had a um, a storage unit that we rented out while we were gone and just threw those air mattresses and bedding and everything and the towels that we used um, in the storage unit. So when we came back, we had all that stuff before our household goods showed up. So yeah, I I had to plan this stuff out, right? So same thing for here. I'm I'm a planner, right? 
So I'm going to find and make sure I have enough pillows for everybody. Because while, yes, some people may bring their own pillows, that's perfectly fine. But if they need a pillow, they have another one, right? So find your pillows and pillowcases, right? And like, oh, hmm, I have mismatched ones. All right, well, a white one and a semi-colored plain one. All right, fine, whatever. Who cares? No one cares um, as long as they fit, right? Then you're going to need a fitted and a flat sheets if you use those and then a comforter or a blanket, right? Um, mine were tucked away in the um, linen closet. So, and they've been stashed there for a while. So I'm like, okay, so again, two days before when I was blowing up those air mattresses, I was also washing those sheets to get them refreshed because they were kind of, yeah, they're kind of stale. Yeah, mm -hmm. we needed to air them out a little bit. So wash those, okay? Um... And then make sure the bedding matches the size of the bed. So that's the hard part when you're looking in a linen closet. You have all these sheets, and if you, they're not organized, um, you're going to have a hard time figuring out, well, which one goes with this air mattress? I have a queen and I have a twin. I'm like, I think those are twin sheets. I'm not sure. So make sure that the bedding size matches the size of the bed, okay? Um, if you have only one size bed, you're, you're lucky, right? <laughs> it's only that one, right? Um, and I just redid our linen closet for like the fifth time, I swear. But now I think I finally got it under control where I actually labeled and put them in like bags of a queen size bedding, twin size bedding, pillowcases, so I could easily find them now. Really? It made my life so much easier. Um, and I put them all on one shelf. And on the second shelf, I had um, towels for my kids. Um, so when theirs get washed, then there's the next one they can grab, right? So again, and so you got the bedding and everything done. Also can think about the bath towels and a washcloth. What I do is normally one bath towel and washcloth per person. So there's five right there, right? So in my closet, as a rule of thumb, what I do because sometimes we just collect lots of things and you don't declutter, right? And this is one of those things that you should do before moving, okay? If there's extra pieces like too many flat sheets or linen, you know, maybe they're mismatched and you're just like, oh, well, what I use is I just remove them from the closet so they don't get packed and then reuse those old sheets when you're doing paint touch-ups, right? It's my drop cloth. Um, so I know if there's going to be mismatched things, I don't want it anymore. It doesn't fit right or it ripped or stained or something. But you know what? Those are perfect for paint touch-ups. Okay. So um, for me, for the bath towels, it is three towels per person total. So there's one hanging up, um, one that could be dirty being washed, and then one clean one in the linen closet right? So there shouldn't be too many towels. I still think I have too many, but I also have different colored ones. So I have a stack of beige ones. I have a stack of light blue ones and I have a stack of like brown ones. Um, so each child gets their own color. Makes it easy for me, but however you want to do it. If you want to keep them all white, keep them because that way you can then, you know, bleach them if you need to just to keep them clean, however you do it. But there shouldn't be like 20 towels. Okay. Um, so if you, you know, like I said, towels, you can also donate if there are ones that are kind of tattered and worn and things like that. When I'm moving and, you know, getting ready to sell our house and things like that, I'll actually put those old towels and then donate them to the local like canine doggy cat adoption center because they're always in need of towels, right? Um, and if you are moving soon and selling your house, let me help you with my how to start staging now guide. It's a PDF with how to influence home buyers, home improvements you should do, and 10 staging tips to get you started. And I'll leave the link in the show notes. But there's a things that you should do before you move, especially if you're limited on weight like us military people. We have a certain amount of that we're allowed to move and why bring it if you don't need it? It's ripped, torn, whatever, and you're not going to, you know, there's too much of it. Declutter before you pack it all up because then you realize on the opposite and when you get there, like, why did I pack 20 towels? We don't need that many. Yeah. So, um, so this helped me when I redid our linen closet to help me stay organized and figure out where everything is. All right. So I have some tips and tricks I want to share with you on some of the other things that I did to get ready even before I had guests. Um, and that is labeling the air mattresses with the size clearly written on the outside. So you don't have to unroll it. 
right? Sometimes you can tell by how thin or little it gets and you're like, oh, it must be a twin size. But some of the other ones, I'm like, did I buy a queen or did I get a king? Do they make a king in your mattress? I don't know, but whatever. But even if you're full and queen, sometimes those are, uh, you know, tricky. So what I do is I just take a Sharpie and literally on the part where the air gets blown in, I just write queen or twin, you know? And so then that way I know and I'm looking at it because I make sure when I put it in the bag that that part is sticking out and facing me. So I know exactly what size it is when I pull it out of a closet, right? So that's number one. That's my trick is labeling the air mattresses with the size. And then same thing when you're moving, um, even though it's labeled and has a sticker and all that fun stuff, what we learned the hard way that I'm like, oh, this is gonna be so much easier on the way on the other end is when those mattresses start coming in, they look all the same. They're all shrink wrapped or put in a box. Take again, a Sharpie and write down, you know, Jason's bed, you know, Jason's mattress, Jason's box spring, who, whoever, Nancy, so-and-so put their name on it. So you know exactly whose bed that is because you're trying to figure out in the inventory, what sticker, whose room. Uh, yeah, no, just literally take a Sharpie and write on the box or the shrink wrap whose it goes to. Okay. So tip number two. All right, uh, tip number three is labeling the bedding size. So when you do redo your linen closet, um, label it, either put it in one of those, sometimes they come in those bags, you know, when you buy them from the store, I'll put them back in those kind of bags. Or if you have, um, sometimes I reuse it, like when I have extra packing cubes, I'll put them in a packing cube. Uh, And then I'll put like a sticker, the blue tape or whatever, and label it twin, full, queen, um, spare flat sheets, you know, so that way you can see what you have, what you have available, right? Um, so that helped me just easily figure out, okay, I have this set, I have this set. And then the other thing is you may not realize you have extras already. Um, like for twins one, twin size bedding for us, our kids have two to three sets in their own closet. So you may not need extra ones in your linen closet because you just steal the extra ones from your kids, right? That's what I realized afterwards. I'm like, oh, I could have made this easier on myself and just used the other, because the kids have their own set of linens that they like and, you know, their colors that go with their room and things like that. And I realized, I'm like, oh, I could have just done that too. So, you know, think about that, right? Uh, Another tip and trick is basically wash those linens just before the guests arrive to avoid that musty, stale smell. And if you're using um, like duvets or comforters or anything like that, um, you can certainly wash them. But what you can also do is um, I actually have a a set right now just airing out literally out in the sunshine. I put it on a lounge chair out by the pool and it's the sun, you know, kills the bacteria anyway, because it's a nice sunny day. It's not going to rain. So make sure it's not raining when you put your stuff out there, your duvet coat comforters, is it just helps air it out, refreshes it, kills the bacteria, and then you just bring it in and it's good to go. So either wash the linens or um, make sure that, you know, the comforters, duvets are aired out. Okay. If you use those. Um, and then another thing is make sure you have enough sleeping pillows. I actually had four sleeping pillows and I used them all um, because then I realized my kids had extra extra pillows in their bedroom too. So yeah, make sure you have enough, um, it, you know, easy ones that you can grab or like Walmart, you know, those kinds of places. If you're kind of wondering, well, where the heck am I going to get those that are not, you know, going to cost like an arm and a leg? Um, yeah, you can get those from, you know, easily from Walmart. They're only like four or five bucks, maybe even less, depending on what kind you get, you know. Um, but again, most of your guests, if they're coming, sometimes they bring their own. I know my husband does and my one of my kids does too. They're like, oh no, I'm bringing my own pillow. I like this one. I'm like, that's perfectly fine. No problem. So those are some tips and tricks. Those are some ways that you can get ready for any overnight guests that you have coming. I hope this helped you out. Um, like I mentioned, I've put some notes or show notes links in there so you guys can download those tips and tricks and things like that. But uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and uh, we'll talk to you later.